I love Little Wing, that's a great song. Yeah, I love it, man. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna start um, with the song, uh, Don't Don't Be Afraid, we'll kinda do a, a run through first, and I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're gonna help me make it sound reggae. Oh, the slow one? Yes. Okay. Are we playing with the click track or no? Oh, I think if you want. Would you like one? Let's just see how it sounds first with that one. Okay. 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 Here we go. Really this one. <laughs> Oh, say. okay, yeah, I don't want to hold it. Okay. I'm nervous. Oh my god, I really... You should see me when I'm in front of people. I'm like, ha ah. Don't be nervous. You're beautiful. Shut up. You are. Ready? So, I'm gonna... It starts on here. With, uh... Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
turn on some signals or put on headphones and like tell me when you can hear me. <laughs> Damn it, he's my favorite, so of course I would sound like him. Aaron Jose, uh, you're doing the art for my CD cover. Damn, it's loud out here. What's it like being an artist? Scary. Scary? It's not scary because the world is fucking chaos. And being capable of putting that on paper is what makes me an artist. So the fact that I can see it, put it on paper, and everybody actually loves the fact that I'm capable of putting their chaos on paper, it's a little scary. Right they don't out. see it as chaos and scary and a projection of themselves, they see it as something coming out of my sick twisted head. But it's a projection of what I see around me. Nobody realizes it. Awesome. Anything else you want to add? Uh, two and two. Right on. My name is Paul Elias Roca. I'm a stand-up comic. So I'm up here on the stage and I know exactly what you're thinking. What the fuck is wrong with Jeremiah Wilkerson right there? Jesus Christ! God, a pen could be more dead if you threw it in some fucking molten lava, man! Light it up! <laughs> it's, uh, it's a pretty good life. Uh, it's hard, it's not easy. Uh, it's, um, I don't know, like, in my opinion, it's probably the hardest profession you can have as a performer in stand-up comedy. Um, just because... There's really no gratification uh, other than the laughter and the responsiveness of your audience. I mean, and, and that's what you're really trying to gain. Aren't hipsters really the worst kind of people you know? These motherfuckers lack integrity, my friend. <laughs> they do! Look, the aesthetic choices of the hipster! But, I mean, I have a show tonight, and I'm coming with an entirely new approach. And uh, I'm hoping it works. It's, it's easier to get exposure now as a comedian because back in the day, you had to have an agent and set up everything. Right nowadays, um, you can actually put your stuff on Funny or Die or on YouTube and stuff, and it's, and it's pretty 
you can get a lot more exposure now. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. That's my time. My name is Paul Roca. Y'all have a great evening. Woo! Let's forget our host. My name is Megan McGinnis. The band is called Holy Cacao. I promised my band I'd kick every time I said the name of our band. It's super duper fun to be an artist. I moved here from New York and it was just so competitive, like so competitive that it was discouraging. And uh, this whole area has been just so welcoming to all levels of, of expertise, I suppose, in music. It's just anybody can be in a band. Our, my band opened up for a band, uh, what was that, a week ago? And they had only been playing their instruments for a year and they're booking shows. And it's just so, it's so possible to be a performing musician in this area, which is great. You can check out the MySpace. It's uh, myspace.com slash holy underscore K-A hyphen K-A-K-O-W. So myspace.com slash holy cacao. Check it out. <laughs> Christopher, this is your art hanging up here. Where are we? Smoking Joe's? Smoking Joe's San Marcos. I can see it a little better. I'll take closer pictures. All right. And for the smaller ones, you're like that's shredded paper. Now, those two have paint as well. Okay. And dark paint too. Cool. So parts of it glow and turn out the lights. But uh, those were like a study. And that one was too, too tight and clean to add paint. Yeah. That looks like. I used a blowtorch on that one too. Cool. This thing's really close. I don't know, I've always identified myself as an artist. It's not even a lifestyle, it's a feeling. So, the urge to create is just either there or not. People who say they need to get motivated to create, they're missing something. Every movement, every motion should be some kind of creativity. Some kind of style, some kind of uniqueness. My name is Zeke Kaifa. I grew up for the most part in Wimberley, around Wimberley and San Marcos, Boston. I'm a singer, songwriter, musician. Um, I've never been very successful as far as income wise or financially in making any kind of progress with music. Um, and I've just recently been offered an opportunity to. Um, uh, step ahead a little bit with music. Um, I finally got financial backing to go into a real studio. I just decided that it was, I would be willing to do whatever I have to to stay in this area so that I could do that. I ended up in town with um, all, quite a bit of my stuff because I was planning on going to um, Wimberley. That, that situation proved to be a, a really bad situation for me. I chose to, uh, the next morning I chose to walk around, head to the river for a little solidarity and I figured any place that was safe and quiet enough and private enough probably would have been overrun by bombs or, you know, it wasn't safe to just, to just chill at. Um, so I, uh, I continued to walk around and I came across a place that was all of those things. It was, it was clean, it didn't look like it had been um, taken advantage of. It was safe um, and quiet and um, and so I, uh, I, I set up a little, you know, not a camp, but a place that I could leave my stuff. I mean, traveling around the town or the city or wherever you are can be really, really hard. When you have to take into consideration that you, know, you set your stuff down somewhere and that it could, it could be stolen or rummaged through or, or any of that. So I, I basically felt comfortable enough putting my stuff on this one little spot. Um, and staying there at night just for sleep and, um, and you know, 
living basically homeless um, during the day down by the river. <laughs> and it was a really, really nice, beautiful river for that matter. And so I didn't have a problem with that. Um, and um, I don't know if the cops were doing a routine um, check on these spots or if someone noticed my flashlights at, at night or what. I mean, I, I was leaving the place unharmed, um, cleaner than I found it. I wasn't abusing the property. And, and um, they, they showed up in the morning and um, at first they were looking for drugs and, and weapons and stuff. And um, they were really a aggressive at first and I told them my situation and they ransacked my everything I owned, I went through every bag I had, everything, and dumped it onto the ground and um, found nothing and I cooperated with them. Um, and they were real polite, they just said, you can't, they have vagrancy law, I guess. They said, you can't, you can't just stay here, um, you're not a student, you're not an employee, and you have to go, and if we find you on, on University property, where we'll, you'll either get a ticket or you go to jail next time. And so, um, packed up my stuff and uh, I found a, a shady spot that I could at least exist and keep my stuff safe while I do whatever it is that I need to do throughout the day to survive. A couple weeks and of just hanging on and um, trying to avoid the cops. And uh, stand fed and uh, keeping the faith. And then continue pursuing what it is that I came here to do. My name's Austin. Just had some red fruit punch. It's kind of like, it's hard to find new guidance, you know, when you don't really have a steady uh, like take a order for a small Yeah, sure will. So it's kind of hard to just be a freelance writer out there. Stay on top of you and tell you what needs to be written. You know, cause there's a lot of stories out there, but it's just, it's like, it's like you gotta grab onto the right one at the right time and write it up, and uh, everything's gotta be right. You gotta have like a $500 to a $900 laptop just to type something. You gotta go to the library, but. I mean, that, all that, so you can maybe make the $125 off of one article. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, definitely, it's economically, it's a, it's a hard job to, to hold. I like, uh, like uh, to hear your music out here on the square, man. Aw, uh, thanks, man. I like to hear John Sai. Appreciate that. Yeah, on the square, man. <laughs> right on, thanks. Oh, yeah. My name is Ryan. Ryan Teese. I guess I've been doing art shows for about nine years now, and... I guess it started off as just doing silly drawings and stuff to um, humor myself, entertain myself, and then I would show them to friends and they would think they were funny and they enjoyed them. And so my first show was at the Coffee Pot here in San Marcos, uh, November 2002. That was my first show, and um, since then I've just been showing. You know, I started showing in Austin. And then a few years later, I moved up to Denton, and I started showing in Dallas and Fort Worth and Denton, and then had a couple shows like outside of Texas. Like I went to Ithaca, New York. I had a show there in 2007, and then uh, the summer of 08, I went to Eugene, Oregon, and had a show there. And so just trying to branch out and everything. And my what I strive for with my work is um, just making people laugh or just you know, humorous subject matter, you know, for people just to enjoy, and then also having stuff that's kind of, what's the word, I don't want to say controversial, I don't know, but, you know, there are pieces that have genitalia in them, and uh, I guess that is kind of like... Like they wouldn't understand, like you know, they didn't get it, you know. And um, yeah, I like I like doing that to people, you know, that uh, just don't get it. With my art, I try to do I try to entertain people that are kind of on the level with the same sense of humor and can appreciate that, and then also to kind of 
uh, induce awkwardness or like uncomfortable, like make people that are just kind of uptight uncomfortable, you know? Like I'm just kind of going off and you need to start over because you're a lot better than this. You're drink some more coffee, have another cup of coffee. You could do better than this. I know. I don't mean to be critical or anything. That's fine. <laughs> on the square. This is what I do every night. It's what I'm known for. Um, this is all I do. Slightly embarrassing talking to myself with this thing in my face. I've been asking everybody what it's like to be an artist because I think that's one of the most important questions uh, right now. Because it's different now, it's harder now. I mean, there's so many factors the economy, uh, how you perform your art, whether it's painting or drawing or music. A lot of people have their part time jobs plus their full time jobs plus whatever other job they can have to, in order to survive, and then they have to make time for their art as well, which could be a job in itself, you know? Yeah, if you're a painter, you'll sell your paintings. If you really want to, you can do that. But it's hard, you know, you can't just do it. You gotta work. Uh, I chose the starving artist route. This is what I chose to do. I've never been happier because I was absolutely miserable when I was working at a job, waking up at the same time every day, going to bed at a reasonable hour, and then um, doing it all over again was just really depressing for me and I loved music and this is what I wanted to do so this is what I do. And it's working out well. Say hi to these guys. So guys, some of the little documentary, you guys want to be on it? What do you want me to say? Anything you want man, just uh, you know? Got, got plays the guitar all night. <laughs> Beautifully. Thank you man. Y'all have a good night. <laughs> Got a chop and stick my body into another person. Shame on you. That's the night comes rolling and she's holding me out. So, unfortunately, to my bachelor degree, I'm here all the time. And just to show dedication, John is here all the time. <laughs> He's fantastic, I love him being here, it's a great time. And he's a great to stop by at least. I mean, if not, then whatever. We look forward to our walk by to the vault just to say hi Every to John and get him Saturday. two dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> G. 
Jay did the female vocals for Star Pilot. How did that feel? It was awesome to be a part of that amazing project. Did you have fun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you go in the coffee pot, it's all the way straight back. Uh, I guess you can't get to the coffee pot. I know it's creepy, but go down this alleyway and make a right. And the tap room is right there. No problem. That's a good sign. Like my sweet ice cream